What's going on everybody, welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video which is on Chelsea's number one goalkeeper and apparently still Spain's number one goalkeeper, Kepa Aritha Balaga. Aritha Balaga, the Spanish pronunciation of Aritha Balaga, Kepa, Chelsea's goalkeeper. The world record fee for a man to stand between the sticks. Granted, not his fault. It was a release clause. Chelsea's hand was forced in many ways after Thibaut Courtois forcing his way out of the club, refusing to train, going back on his word to Chelsea, leaving them in a difficult situation. Sure, Chelsea got decent money for Courtois, all things considered, looking at everything now, but their hand was forced to buy Kepa. Right, before we get into more of this video and the details, the harrowing details of some of the statistics going around Kepa, please, and also, what could happen next? <laughs> please do subscribe to Football Therapy. If you've not yet done so, hit the bell notifications icon. Why not like this video to help me out? All right, let's carry on. So where was I? Right, Chelsea buy Kepa for 71, 72 million pounds. Now, Kepa was highly rated before Chelsea bought him. Now, this isn't going to be me just slating Kepa throughout this video. I want to give like some full context here. Kepa and I'm Eric Laporte were probably Bill Bauer's two best players with release clauses. Obviously, Manchester City triggered the release clause for Laporte and Chelsea did the same for Kepa. That was a lot more money and obviously a worse deal. But the fact remains is they didn't just pluck this player out of the air. Real Madrid wanted Kepa. He played a lot of games, done some impressive saves, demonstrated good footballing ability on playing with his feet, as well as having good reflexes. Now, he's not the tallest Kepa, he's actually quite short for a goalkeeper. He's probably the same height as me, just a shade over six foot. I would feel tiny in a Premier League goal, but Chelsea went for it. And at first I was like, whoa, this seems crazy. So many people were, but then again, I saw him make some good saves. And also, he seems very, very confident when he came in, really believed in himself, had this attitude, had this sort of screaming, roaring persona that I thought, yeah, Chelsea goalkeeper, awesome at the back, everything's gonna be okay. It suits Sari, it suits Sari ball because he's technically good with his feet, he's good at passing, and he's actually really good off his line. So I was pretty happy. He signed a seven year deal, Chelsea were protecting their investment, and I thought, right, done. Goalkeeper sorted forever. Well, you know what I mean. Turns out things have turned pretty bad. Before I get to the completely negative part of this video, I do want to explain how I saw Kepa do great things last season. I've said in this channel before, I watched him live quite a lot last season, and I saw him make great saves, do good moments uh, on the ball, whether it's passing out, whether it's running out sweeping to hit the ball and actually turning it into like a 60 yard pass. And I was sat quite close to the goal in the Europa League final, semi-final, excuse me, where he was the penalty shootout hero with those two magnificent saves Saves, that one when he turns onto his knee, superb save that obviously saw Chelsea into the Europa League final where they would go and beat Arsenal 4-1 and win the European trophy. Sure there was Kepagate with the, uh, what was it, the semi-final or the final, and it was the final because I was there as well at Wembley when he refused to come off the pitch and Sarri lost his head understandably. Um, at first I was like, obviously that's a disgrace, you've got to come off, but there was a little residual part of me was like, right, he really does believe in himself and there's something in there. And by the end of last season, Kepa became Spain's number one at the expense of David De Gea. No small feat. The Spanish uh, national team coaching staff came out and explained how Kepa's the number one and how his player profile fits the national team a lot better than perhaps David De Gea, who's also you know, an amazing shot stopper, but perhaps not the great, greatest footballing goalkeeper. So at this point, things look pretty good, right? Well, Sari leaves, Lampard comes in, and new stories have broken recently that even when Lampard came in, he wasn't happy with Kepa. Watching from afar and when he came into the club, one of Frank Lampard's first things that he wanted to do was change the goalkeeping coach from Hilario to Shea Given. The club did not grant him his request and things had to carry on as the status quo as they were. And apparently Lampard wasn't then and indeed, as you can imagine, isn't now happy with Kepa. And in fact, there's rumours and stories that have surfaced this last couple of days that Lampard actually wants to get rid of Kepa in the summer. The thing is, Chelsea would suffer a huge financial loss on this. I mean, obviously, of course they will. 
they're never going to get 71 million back for this keeper and the stats I'm about to tell you in a moment would dictate they'd struggle to maybe get 30 million for this keeper. Chelsea are not going to make a 40 million pound loss on an acquisition they bought like a couple of seasons ago. Really the best thing they could probably do with Kepa is send him out on loan um, with no loan fee, just the other team has to pay his wages and maybe he develops some confidence back and maybe there's an option to buy at the end of his loan for say like 45, 50 million and then Chelsea will have to take some form of financial hit regarding Kepa if that is indeed what Chelsea want to do. So you're probably watching this video like, what, yeah, I know he's been a bit bad lately, but those last two goals weren't necessarily his fault that happened in the Premier League. Why are you being so hard on him? You just said earlier in the video you saw all this good from him. I did, but let's pull out the Sky Sports <laughs> article that loads of you have probably already seen on my phone that offers some rather disturbing statistics. Right, so in the Premier League, save percentages from shots inside the box ranking 1 to 20. Now this is all the starting goalkeepers in the Premier League for their respective clubs. At the top is Alisson, you know, you'd expect that. He's been amazing since joining for Liverpool. But dead bottom, right at the bottom, is Kepa. So <laughs> Alisson's save percentage is 70.6. Kepa's save percentage is 51 dead bottom and 19th is Pope basically on 58 which is a huge gap from Kepa. Kepa is not only 20th in the Premier League but by some distance from 19th. Now save percentage in the box is a hard one I think because I think maybe that's when balls just sort of get squared around him or headed in so perhaps it's a little bit unfair and, and is a kind of a reflection on Chelsea's poor defending but still oh damn and what is kind of worrying is 19th is uh, Nick Pope who is being touted as perhaps a Kepa replacement at Chelsea and although he's made some amazing saves and you know he's demonstrated superb goalkeeping ability you know he's he's 19th right let's move on to another deeply concerning statistic goals prevented Premier League this season Kepa has conceded almost eight goals more than expected this season. So this is like the expected goals saved metrics. It's kind of like a sophisticated way of looking at a goalkeeper and saying what well, the average save should be, you know, all things considered. Geiter of Crystal Palace is, is actually in the positives of 6.28, but Kepa is in the negative at 7.8. Again, he's 20th, Pope's behind him, but again, by a little bit of a distance as well. It is poor, 20th again by some distance. Very, very worrying. So let's talk about the big six goalkeepers. Goals prevented by said big six goalkeepers. Premier League record since Kepa joined Chelsea. So this is since he signed. So interestingly, Lloris in that time is actually plus 10. Allison's about plus five or six. Leno and Edison are about the same. And then it's both De Gea and Kepa that are in the negatives. De Gea obviously has been in really poor form, but Kepa is still nearly twice as bad as him with minus 9.65. He's doing a lot worse than he should be doing. I can't really defend it systemically anymore with saying, oh yeah, but Chelsea get carved open, you know, da 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 da. It's really, really poor, and what's not going to help him, obviously, is this price tag that he's carrying around on his head. But also, now, these statistics have been circulated quite comfortably around the football media, and everyone knows the numbers, and they are dismal. Not only would, and probably should, put Kepa's Spanish number one position under threat, you know, which it might, P people aren't stupid, they're going to look at that, but it makes Chelsea put Chelsea in a really difficult position. Sure, he is talented, okay? That's not up for dispute. There's a reason why Real Madrid wanted him. He has done great things for Chelsea. I've seen it with my own eyes. But because you do something great every now and again, you're a goalkeeper. Goalkeepers need to be consistent. Because, like, if he saves Chelsea a few more points this season, somehow Chelsea is six points clear from Man United, which is just insane in the Premier League at the moment, as I speak to you today. But if Kepa was a little bit better, maybe Chelsea would be in a better position. Frank Lampard, understandably, has been defending him in the public, in the media. But he's starting to make a few noises that he's not happy with him. Not just in terms of not saving his goals, but overplaying it, to keeping his foot on the ball for too long, not putting his foot on the ball when he needs to, the passing out thing, giving wobbly moments in terms of distribution. Kepa is obviously a player in really, really low confidence. And for me, he needs to be taken out of the firing line for a few games. For my money, Frank Lampard needs to bring in Willy Caballero. Um, which is a little bit disappointing for me is Chelsea sold Marin Bolka to PSG. I know he's not getting a game over there at the moment. He's probably just earning ridiculous amounts of money. But he's a 20-year-old, six foot six, 
uh, feet too. Really, really strong, good shot stopper, confident. I would have brought, I would have kept him as the number three, uh, not Jamie coming on. I kept Bolker and say, look, you play some games. And to be honest, man, he probably could have like played the cup games. Caballero could have come in for the prem games, and who knows, Bolker might play a few prem games. I don't know, man. Point being, Kepa needs to be taken out of the firing line for the moment. And like I said, really, if he doesn't sort his head out, because it does seem mental at the moment, and that's a poor, poor quality for a goalkeeper to be shaking like that. I mean, you know, think about Loris Karius and stuff like that. No good whatsoever. So what did Chelsea do? Did they loan him out back to Spain in the summer on like a two-year loan with a option or obligation to buy for 40 million pounds or something like that do you know what i mean and then what do you do do you bring in someone like nick pope who's everyone's talking about but like i said the stats just there they're not that great either someone that i'd love chelsea to be looking at if this all happens the way i'm talking about is manchester united's dean henderson who is on the loan at sheffield uh, united he looks absolutely superb but, you know, would they do that? Probably not. Although they, Chelsea have done loads of business with United in the past, selling them Juan Mata, Nemanja Matic, stuff like that. So maybe there's an open relationship there. Who knows? Point being, I don't want to actually write Kepper off completely here. Like I said, he is talented. He's got loads of skills in his locker. He just needs to, like, go to a temple for, like, six months and just chill, clear his head. Or Chelsea really need to address the goalkeeping uh, staff at the club. Maybe... Do what Frank wants, get Shea given in, or just get other people in. Something needs to happen. Anyway, what do you guys think? Get down in the comments below. What would you do? Would you give Kepper more chances? Would you bench him? Would you sell him? Let me know. Get down in the comments below. Remember to subscribe to Football Therapy if you've not yet done so. Why not like this video if you've enjoyed the content? And remember, I'm keeping you guys updated in the closing days of the transfer window every day. So swing by the channel and check out what's going on every day. I may well do another video today if some more news breaks, so make sure you swing by, check it out. Remember, you can follow me on social media at FootballYannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, guys. You lot enjoy the football, hopefully, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby